Are you thinking of starting a limited company? If so, this video is for you as we chat about all the pros and the cons of doing just that. So this is one of the most common questions that we get asked as small business accountants all day, every day. Doesn't matter how many internet forums, Twitter and everything else you go on, this question gets asked all the time. And if you Googled it right now or asked your friends and family, you'd get a ton of different opinions and everybody would have their uh, two P's worth in terms of whether it's a good idea or not. So in this video, I'm gonna run you through some of the good and some of the bad reasons uh, around why it might be a good idea to have a limited company. The first thing to say though, is that actually uh, as accountants, we've got a wide variety of limited companies. So it's not a case of you need to be X size to be one. I've got a cake maker that turns over a very small amount of money that's a limited company and then I've got the usual multi-million pound manufacturers. So it just depends on uh, what type of uh, tax situation and all the other things that are going on in the background makes it worth it. But I'm going to talk on broad brush on this video and there are exceptions. So I'm sure if there's other accountants watching this there'll be bits where they'll be like oh well actually in this case you'd be all right. But uh, I'm just going to give you the, the broad strokes so you can uh, have a bit more of a feeling anyway of whether you should be looking at doing this. So let's get straight into it. We'll look at the good and the bad. So starting with the good, one of the main issues I think that's quite key is that it's a separate legal entity. So a lot of people go for limiteds just for this reason and that's the fact that if it all goes wrong and uh, you know you lose it all and the business tanks, well at least your house and your personal assets are generally safe uh, behind this wall because it's not, you know, the company doesn't own your house, it doesn't own your car, it just owns the things the business owns. And as a result, that's quite a handy thing. The only caveat to this would be very, very careful in that uh, if you're going for business finance, quite often as a director, you can be asked to sign a personal guarantee and that means they can bypass that and go straight to you for it. So just bear that in mind when you're looking at things like overdrafts and funding if you get to that sort of stage. But quite often we see people who are looking at this from a legal protection point of view, when they're taking on staff, when they're getting VAT registered, when they're taking on slightly more riskier, bigger work, they're all good reasons really to think that limited liability as it's known is a really, really good thing. So that is one of the giant positives of the whole situation. So one of the key positives, and I suppose as accountants, the one we get most excited about is that limited companies will save tax. In the right circumstances, they just will. The question comes, as we'll talk about later, is whether the extra costs of having them, which is one of the downsides, actually outweigh the uh, tax savings that you're gonna make. Now, the reason they save tax generally is because if you look at where you are as a sole trader, as a sole trader business, you get a tax bill that's calculated as, here's your profit, here's your tax bill, that's it. You can do everything you can to try and squeeze that profit legally down, make sure you're uh, getting all your allowances, reliefs, claiming for everything you should be, but ultimately you're in no control of, of any other tax bill. It's just gonna be a case of here's your maths, and at the bottom of it is gonna be some tax to pay, depending on how successful you've been, depends on how big that tax bill is. But with a limited company, because you can choose as an owner and a director, that's generally the setup you're gonna have, to pay yourself a little bit of salary on paper, like you would if you were employed with a pay slip, that kind of stuff, and to have the rest of your money in what's known as dividends, which is just profit from the company, you can actually save quite a lot of national insurance contributions without losing any of the benefits for things like state pension and all the rest of it. And that's where a lot of the savings come from. Now alongside this as well, there's a lot of rules difference between um, self-employed and uh, being a limited company and being effectively employed by your own limited company that you own. And as a result, opens up some extra rules, things like we would call them trivial benefits and staff parties and other things that you might not have access to normally. So uh, that helps bring your tax bill down as well. But as a sole trader, you know, if you're doing very well, you're going to be paying large portions of national insurance. You're also going to be paying 40% tax potentially. Now, a limited company at the time recording the video will only pay 19% tax on its profit full stop. But then it will pay some extra personal tax, you as the owner and the director, uh, will pay some personal tax on the dividends that you draw. So depending on how much you draw out that company, you'll then pay some more tax. So it sounds odd that you're being taxed twice and it's better, but that's the maths of it, is being taxed twice in this circumstance is normally better than being taxed once as self-employed. Um, what's quite cool about it though is if you're developing the business and you don't want to draw a lot of money, obviously your personal tax bill is going to be less because you're not tax that second time right then. The balance as accountants and good tax planning is trying to figure out what's the best level to draw even if you don't need it and that's where we come in to make sure that people aren't wasting allowances and things like that. But it certainly will save tax. So if you're in a limited company right now and you're watching this video and you're thinking, that's interesting, I'm not sure I'm doing that right. The thing to consider is there's a nice level of salary that you can have on paper. Let's call it 8,600 quid. It just depends on where you are in, in what tax year. But at that kind of level, you get a tick in the box that says, okay, um, I've earned enough 
um, to get a state pension qualifying year, which is important for your pension, but also I get a tax deduction in my company for my salary, which is great, and it's under my personal allowance. I'm not gonna pay any personal national insurance, but I keep all the benefits of doing it. So that's a good level to, to have it. Um, and that does change depending if you've got more employees or depending on other income, but it's a good as a, just a standalone, um, again, broad brush figure, that's a good one to look for. So just generally, yeah, tax-wise, they're, they're phenomenally good in the right circumstance, but it's just understanding what that circumstance is. The other thing that's really, really good about this is it's linked to tax, but it's to do with payments on account. So if you're a sole trader and you've had a successful year, you'll know the pain of this. You tend to pay twice a year, so you tend to pay your big bill in January, and then they want the same amount of money up front in two halves. So if you had to pay 10 grand in the January, they'd want another five grand in January and another five grand in July for the next year. So you think, okay, that's all right. It means next year, um, when it comes around to it, they're gonna take those two five grand payments into account off my tax bill, but they still you're still on this constant um, cycle where they want the next, uh, years up front so you're always sort of out of pocket it's also it tends to be um sort of feast and famine sometimes you just feel like you're forever paying tax out and then suddenly you'll get a load back and think it's amazing and then the following year because you've paid nothing up front you get this large bill it's just a bit of a horrendous system really and uh, it can be horrible in terms of cash flow with a limited company the limited company at small business size only pays one bill a year and then the only bit where you'll have to pay twice is if you're drawing loads of money your dividends that will have personal tax on will end up incurring some where you might have to but again somebody on say 45 grand 50 grand a year is probably paying a couple of thousand in personal tax um, if you did that as a sole trader you'd, you'd realize it's massive sums of money so um, there really is a cash flow saving to uh, to being limited so that's the other side of the, the the tax equation as to whether it's worth it you'd really feel the difference for sure I think there's also that thing that the limited company as a benefit is looked on as being more professional. You know, you look at it and I think some people see it as a, you know, I've got a company, it's limited, it's nice, you can call yourself a director and a shareholder and all these other cool terms. But ultimately some people do look at companies and we often see this with VAT reg as well. I mean, the people in business know that, to, um, you know, a lot of the time if you're VAT registered, especially if you're director of the customer, you'll have to have been doing well to have been VAT registered. So um, yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those things. It's sort of a soft, benefit, I suppose, but it's definitely there. And the other, I suppose, uh, other benefit that's there is if you're looking, if you're an early stage business and you're looking for investment at some point, or you're looking to take on a sort of a business partner or something like that, because the way you own the company with shares, it hives up very nicely. You can sort of turkey slice it and say, okay, well, here you go, you have 20% of the shares and you have 10% and uh, these kind of things. It makes it very investable as a, as a unit and sellable eventually. So that's the other thing. If you've got a long-term plan of doing that, I think it's definitely worth looking at early doors. Now onto some of the more sad, bad areas of having a limited company. And I suppose the first one to start with is the one I touched on earlier, which is the more costly. Now, the reason they're more costly to have is because you need accountants, firstly. When you're sole trader, you could potentially do this yourself. You can go to, um, you can go to, to Revenue and Customs website, type it on there, get yourself a tax return, and you could fill in the boxes if you like, and, and you might not know the 22,000 pages of law behind this, but you could definitely have a good go of doing it yourself, especially if your affairs are quite simple. With a limited company, that option's not there because there's no free software to submit the accounts needed. They have to be electronically tagged, uh, electronically tagged in a certain format, um, and the corporation tax return has to be in, in another format as well, and it all has to be done electronically. And there's no free software currently uh, for that as it stands, so you'd need an accountant. Uh, and it's a fair bit of work. The accounting standards that you have to adhere to change every year. There's a lot of talk about how this should be represented, even amongst the accountants. You could have a, a room full of accountants and have a good old debate about whether something should be an asset or you know, in the profit and loss and all these kind of things. So it's there you're paying special advice to make sure that they're correct. And also you're maximizing the best result for tax while staying within those rules. So as a result, yeah, accountancy fees are gonna be higher. The other thing is that you really need good bookkeeping. So one of the problems is, I think bookkeeping gets a bit of a bad name. It's seen as a bit of a, a low, a low level job but actually it's a very career it's a career you know it's a very high level job in fact and to be a really good bookkeeper is a fantastic achievement I think and people spend years trying to get good at this I've got a team of them upstairs all of them have been through years of college and practice to do what they do so um, I think they get a little bit sad when people see it as a bit of a low level job but proper to what they call double entry bookkeeping where you're reconciling every payment that comes in and out of that bank and everything else going on um, has a cost to it now quite often you're going to outsource that if you're looking to be a successful business that's going to grow or you might love it and you might want to do it yourself 
yourself, but then there's a time cost. And of course, software. You're gonna need some sort of software to do it. There's some great products in Xero, Free Agent, QuickBooks, these type of things, but they cost, you know, let's just put a 20 pound mark on it, 20, 30 quid a month to have. And uh, yeah, it, it is a cost to, to sort of bear in mind, but I think if you're running a limited company, absolute essential. So that's there as well. But yeah, cost generally is it's just gonna cost a lot. I mean, it's not unusual to see, you know, two, three times the cost of what it costs for a sole trader to work with an accountant on a limited just to get the basics done because you're going to have a full set of accounts to do, a tax return to do, personally, a company tax return to do. There's also a couple of companies' house returns, a um, person of significant control register and a confirmation statement. So there's quite a lot that's, that's going on in there. And generally, you also want to set a submit a second set of accounts which don't show the world because you have to put one on the public record uh, everything you've made in terms of actual profit so uh, there's like a cut down version that goes on there so yeah so cost that would be the primary downside to it all so the other downsides really we already touched on the bookkeeping element I think that's something to um, a, a cost whether in time or money that you need to be aware of and the other one is just they're more complicated to close down so if you suddenly decide look this is I'm done or it, it finds itself in trouble there's still quite a lot of statutory things that need to be done to do that properly and and they can be quite costly. Whereas if you're a sole trader, you just shut the business down and um, stick a date in your tax return, really, providing you've done everything you should have done for tax. So uh, that's something that also, I suppose, is a, is a cost or a downside. So you've watched the majority of this, and I suppose in summary, what you're gonna to say to me is, well, should I be limited then? Now, what I'd say is, again, broad brush, have a look at your profits. If you're in excess of about 25,000 pound profit, then you can see that in your tax calculation if you're a sole trader business or if you're just going into business and you're thinking I'm easy doing 25k or and I've, or you've got other substantial income then the answer is you're probably in that zone to be limited uh, it will save tax at less but it's it's uh, 25 grand ish you're starting to be in that area where it's going to outweigh the actual costs of having an accountant do the bits they need to do for you so uh, that would be a really good level I think and again because it is so broad brush that can change if you've got other substantial income using the cake company the cake company and have uh, it still save tax because they're in quite a high powered job that they're paying a load a load of money in and actually they want to reinvest all their profits and as a result uh, it's a really quite a tax efficient vehicle for doing that so um, yeah it, it is dependent on your situation so if you wanted to chat that through with an accountant I'd definitely recommend getting in touch with one because most of them will be able to have a look at it in five minutes on a bit of a fag packet maths as I call it and just tell you whether it's a good idea or not but uh, yeah as a broad brush if you're sole trading in that zone definitely look at it and of course if you have any questions you want to get in touch with me please do I'd love to have a chat with you about it so that's it for this video hopefully you've enjoyed it so please do share it with any friends or colleagues that you think it's appropriate to and we'll see you on the next one